titles in a row. And even sweeter, I'm sure, the second time around. Manchester United continue to wear the championship crown. You get that every year in your life. It's absolutely fantastic. You're at the peak then, you know, that's the peak we're at. Um, you see a support like that and the, the celebration is wonderful. But the long and winding road began at Wembley Way back in August 93. The Charity Shield, the Champions United and the Cup winners Arsenal. Alex Ferguson and George Graham, managers of sides with markedly different styles. And it was United, first to the punch. Serwing, wonderfully consistent last season, gets in the cross. Missed by Lidigan, back by Cantona, and followed in by Mark Hughes. And there is celebration on the Manchester United bench. In the eighth minute, they lead Arsenal by a goal to nil. And last season's leading scorer is on target here at Wembley, Mark Hughes. Right? opportunity here to win the charity shield for Arsenal. No! But Robson clears it in and Manchester United now are in front. And suddenly Arsenal are under pressure. Well, David Seaman. This is a rarity. One goalkeeper against the other. And Michael saves. And Manchester United celebrate. The champions have triumphed in the summer showcase yet again. Well, it's always nice to pick up uh, trophies and uh, I mean, this is a good start. We can't, I mean, you never get used to pick up trophies. That's something you want to do for the rest of your life. Uh, and I, I think, yeah, it's, it is a pretty good start for the season. To kick off the league programme, the computer had dealt the champions an away trip to Norwich as the defence of the title began for real. At the dawn of a new season, a man in the twilight of his career was suddenly central to the plans once again. Brian Robson, a first-team starter, despite the number 12 on his back. Erwin takes the corner. Keane. Hughes, there's no flag from the linesman. Gun back pedalling. It comes for Giggs. It nestles in the corner of the net. And the champions have taken the lead at Carrow Road. Very untidy from the Norwich point of view. Ryan Gunn feels aggrieved. Ryan Giggs is delighted. We've become accustomed to Manchester United with Eric Cantona. The delightful touch and Brian Robson in the right place at the right time, ramming the ball past Gunn. Owen moving to the left, Parker to the right. That's the Parker option that Robson selects. Hughes. A real thump to the header. Ball reach to the save from Gunn. Kanchelskis to Parker. Hughes! <laughs> he wasn't quite sure where it was going to end up. 
United. For Roy Keane. Great ball from Parker. First game at Old Trafford. White House cross. Alistair lets it go, <laughs> nobody's going to argue with Peter Schmeichel when there's a bouncing ball. And look at Ryan Giggs go, foot on the accelerator. It's like a mini trying to catch a Porsche, and here comes Hughes. And that's the Rolls-Royce waiting in the middle. Ryan Giggs, acceleration then, he did 0-60 to in something like three seconds. The first major instalment on Roy Keane's transfer fee had been repaid, a two-goal introduction at Old Trafford for the man dubbed the new Brian Robson. United have broken the British transfer record, investing three and three-quarter million pounds in a player for the future. Keane's introduction to the club had actually come on the summer tour to South Africa. It helped him acclimatise to life in the big time, to life with the champions. Well, it's a bit different, you know, it's a bit more high profile. But I'm enjoying it. It's, I've only been here a couple of days, obviously, and I'm just trying to get settled in now. They didn't make it easy for him. In baking heat, Keane was pushed through a pre-season stint that would have finished lesser men. What time, right? Super time, right? Pretty hard. Pretty tough going, yeah. But I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it just about. Keane's integration had begun. United had demonstrated their belief in planning for the future by buying the best young talent around. Just everything about the club, you know. I was very impressed with the manager. Uh, there's so many things, you know, European football. They've got such a great team, a great stadium, great fans. I could be here till tomorrow to, to, to get, tell them why I'd sign for United. But basically, you know, they've got a good team. They're going to be around for the next five, ten years winning trophies, and that's what I want to do. Back to the league, and Kevin Keegan's newly promoted Newcastle United were the next visitors to Old Trafford. At that stage, Keegan's side was still to pick up a point. Six men in the wall. It's Giggs, and it's a brilliant goal. The players in the wall look back and ask how those in the Stratford end will be able to tell them. Superb strike. Watson, not a good touch. Bracewell. O'Brien looks to see what's going on. Two days later, United were away at Aston Villa, who'd pushed them so close for the title the season before. It was a perfect summer's evening to witness the very best English football had to offer. Lee Sharp making his first full appearance of the season, so too the Black Strip. And that was the only dark offering of a game that lit up Villa Park. Hughes gets the better of McGrath. Ince, Giggs, Ince has carried on with his run, chance here for Manchester United, and still could be a goal, and it is for Lee Sharp. Return to the side with a goal. It's Lee Sharp's goal. But what a big thank you he's got to pay to Collins. Great play by Giggs. He holds it, lets him get in there. El Barris, a little bit of sleep in my opinion there. And that's just enough for Lee Sharp to dig it into the net. Now Parker. Richardson there. And the header down. And almost in by Daly and Atkinson. That was sliding and gaining pace off the turf. McGrath getting the better of the tussle. It's a really fascinating battle. Now here's Daly and Atkinson. Saunders has pulled away to the far post. Atkinson might go on his own. Has that crept in? Daly and Atkinson. Schmeichel couldn't keep it out. And Villa are level. It's a very interesting position. Konchelskis here with space. Oh, close, close, close. Oh, wonderful. This is great stuff. It really is. Saunders with that instinctive effort. And what a goal that would have been. And a great save by Peter Schmeichel. Staunton. Away by Ince. Only as far as Kevin Richardson, who's lining this one up. And it hits a post. Tremendous effort. What action we're having here at Villa Park. Side here, Ryan Giggs. 
A little bit wide, still Giggs. Can he do it? Oh, the inside of the post. Can you believe it? And too long for Mark Hughes, but really that was some magical play by Giggs, and it only lacked that finishing touch. He was a whisker away. Well, a whisker away, exactly. My first reaction is offside, but you can see that he isn't. Sean Teal plays him on there, and once he's away, well, there's no one going to catch him. The question is, can he finish it? You think he has done? Well, it's one each in goals and one each in woodwork. Look at that. Nigel Spitz has got a quite a good angle. He makes it difficult for Giggs. The only survivor of Villa's 1982 European Cup winning side on the pitch. Of course, Gordon Cowens is on the staff. Oh, here is Sharp. One on one. Here's a chance for his second goal, and United second, and he's taken it. 2 1. And it's a glory night for young Lee Sharp. Paul Lynch looks up. Now look at that gap. Brian Small is a, is a main culprit for me. He ends up watching, and when Lee Sharp was given that much time, I felt there was no other outcome to it than to be picking it out the back of the net. Loser. It's a really fantastic match in the sense that both teams played exceptionally well, which is not the norm when a team wins the game 2-1 as we did. But the pitch was beautiful, and I always feel in a night game when the Floyd lights are on and a good pitch, it's British football, you know, and that was the best you saw. The best of British, there may be Eric Cantona's the best in world football at the moment. The magical Frenchman made his first appearance down at the Dell. United come forward again with Roy Keane. Lovely skills there from Cantona. Here's Irwin. Sharp! Four minutes. One nothing. Lee Sharp, the scorer. United slow to clear the lines. It'll break for Madison. And Southampton are back level. Sharp. Giggs. Hughes, Bruce just losing out on the edge, and Southampton can bring it away again, but it breaks down, Cantona, oh my goodness, magnificent from the Frenchman. We've almost come to expect that kind of thing from him. He's always capable of the spectacular, and that is class. Good tackle from Ince. Cantona. Certainly got balance and strength to match all the guile. Here's Irwin from Giggs, pass, and Irwin scores! 3-1. Undefeated and top of the table. More breathtaking football. What a way to begin a defence. It was 13 points from five games moving into September, and three of the next four matches were at home. So far, so good. So now for West Ham. Cantona with the boots flying in his face, shields it so well. Keane takes control. Now Kanchelskis. Three shirts in the centre. Oh, what a header! Oh, what a goal! Lee Sharp is on fire at the moment. That's four goals now for three games. And Lee Sharp is after a place in Graham Taylor's England lineup. Cantona with a tackle. Keane with the space, McCloskey off his line, Keane keeps going, no doubt, penalty. Always oh, going to be a goal or a penalty, I think, in that situation. Could be last kick in the first half. Cantona against McCloskey, and Cantona salutes the fans. 2-0, I must say now, I think it's beyond West Ham United. They won't want to come out for the second half. Parker's timing is exemplary. So is the touch of Giggs. What's the finish of Giggs like? Oh, not bad. I think that was a, a fingertip save from Ludic McClosco. As Giggs and Cantona are showing off. And a lunging challenge from Tim Breaker breaks up another scintillating Manchester United attack. over everyone's head, Foster gets his uh, head to it, drops to Robson. And Sharp gets another go. Two decoy runs! 
comes and Steve Bruce scores. Now there's a rare one for you. Well, the first thing you're told when you come into the game is never doubt your own ability. Uh, a lot of other people will. So, you know, the main thing is not to doubt yourself. Um, when I was given a lot of confidence boosters by people around me, uh, you know, and it's just a matter of time and, and keep working hard. It's Pallister, all good running by Keane, and he's got away from Kilberg. Kareen improvising, Cantona with the keeper out of his goal! Oh, it's at the bar! Fantastic! Oh. Who needs Pelé? Eric Cantona nearly providing a goal that would have been etched, I would think, in Stamford Bridge history. Antonar starts a run. And that's well played by Brian Robson. He's found Irwin. This is meant for Sharp. Cantonar in the middle now! It's a let-off for Chelsea. It's a great ball by Sharp, and it's agony for Cantonar. It was agony for Alex Ferguson too as the minutes ticked away. The first defeat of the season by the season's bogey side. But it was all smiles the following week, the Manager of the Month award for August, the trophy and champagne presented on the pitch before the home game with Arsenal. It wasn't a great game, but Cantona's goal, really, they made it the game. You know, the game is all about Cantona's goal. An incredible hit, you know, and I think we deserve to win it. Uh, but the goal was special. And Eric Cantona looks as if he fancies it. Well, it's just teed up for Cantona. Oh! A real cracker from Cantona! On the biggest stage, he is the master performer. Oh, says Alec Ferguson. Oh, indeed. I think the word is magnifique that Fergie was stretching for, and that would describe that fittingly. Because David Seaman sees an awful lot of this. Watch. He sees an awful lot of the ball. But look at the venom and the accuracy of that free kick. Roy Keane. Kanchelskis. Cantona. Kanchelskis has continued the run. The hands go up for offside. No question of that. Kanchelskis all the way. Yes, 1-0 inside the first five minutes of the game. Swindon trying to mount some sort of attack, but interception from Lee Sharp, who gets it back from Dennis Irwin. Looks up, oh, lovely ball, Cantona onside, and a real chance because the keeper stayed where he was, and Cantona makes it 2-0. Good return ball. Here's Sharp again. Lovely ball, lovely header. Great goal, Manchester United. Bowden. Swindon just trying to get something for all the efforts they put into the game. And maybe they've got one. Yes, Andy Murch. Right on cue. Digby. It's a long searching kick. Good skills from much. White tumbles. Penalty. Goodness me. Swindon with a real chance now. So Paul Bowden to bring them within a goal. And they have done. 3 2 now. And it's certainly not been Manchester United's most fluent display. And Swindon are trying to see if they can pull off a real shot and an equaliser. But at the moment, it's United with Paul Ince. Can he keep it there? Yes, he can. He seemed to lose it in his footing, but it's kept alive. And Mark Hughes has finished the game off. And the points are safe now, 4-2. The usual fluency may have been lacking, but the usual pole position was being maintained. Only the Chelsea defeat marring a fruitful September in the league and suddenly a gap developing.
who'd be the likely challengers to United this time round. In October, Sheffield Wednesday, Tottenham, Everton and QPR threw their hats into the ring. Sinton. Quickly taken. And Bart Williams puts Sheffield Wednesday in front. Shot by Nelson, hit Pallister, and the rebound has fallen for Keane. And he set Sharp away. Three to his right. And there's a very well taken equaliser by Mark Hughes. Beautifully done. The killer touch of the lethal finisher. And that was well done by uh, Keane for Cantona. Very tight, but Hughes needed just an inch and found the net. Mark Hughes again demonstrates that you cannot afford to let him see the goal. It's Cantonar's dummy. Lovely little ball from Cantonar. Giggs can make it three very easily with that trusted left foot given the benefit of another beautiful help yourself ball from Eric Cantona. Should have been a pass to Waddle when it didn't reach him. Manchester United were able to bring it out of their own half and Cantona and then Giggs finished it off in style. It's 3-1. Four minutes to go. They get back into the game. It was an all-out assault on four fronts. United dealt with Honved of Hungary in the European Cup first round. Steve Bruce leading the troops from the front, a 5-3 aggregate victory. And a refreshing start in the Coca-Cola Cup. Alex Ferguson choosing to use his big squad. Brian McClare helping himself against Stoke in round two. But success leads to international call-ups and Alex Ferguson's players were being extended to the limit. Paul Ince was injured for England against Holland. But not a bad replacement, ready-made. Captain Marvel on hand to come back into the side to face Tottenham. Sarah was surprised that Howes didn't come for that. Kenton are very quick to take advantage. Nice little touch. And here's Hughes. Good save, follow-up Robson. Second good save, follow-up Sharp. Didn't keep it under control. Bit of a wrestling match going on. Sharp gets the cross in. Keane on the outside of the foot. Curls the ball into the corner. <laughs> Mistake by Howells and this is Sharp. And that's two. Delight for Manchester United and their following. Four Spurs players around the edge of the 18-yard area. Now five. It's other than the two who are into passing. And in comes Edinburgh, who gets in unmarked. And Kraski scores. Manchester United chasing the ball at the moment. But Everton, in spite of a series of successful passes, not so far going anywhere. Oh, that's a mistake by Keane, and it's led in Barlow, and Schmeichel has saved, and Cotty has had the follow-up blocked. But a terrible mistake by Keane, let Barlow in, and Barlow, still trying to make an impact in the first team, hesitated over his shot, and Schmeichel smothered it. Cantona. Well, that's a beautiful ball. Martin, first time, good cross. Executed volley, lean back just enough. 1 0, Manchester United, eight minutes gone in the second half. A flick on that time from Cotty, and Beagree was in, and Schmidt.
Schmeichel, for the second time in the game, gets his body down fast and makes a block at point-blank range. Two excellent saves now by Schmeichel. I don't usually score sort of goals from outside the box, so, um, you know, to catch one as sweet as I did, it was, uh, it was nice. More than nice, that was a cracker, wasn't it, really? Oh, be modest, but if you say so. <laughs> For more injuries to hit the balance of the United side, Gary Pallister forced onto the sidelines. Happily, Paul Parker stepped into the middle to face his old side, Queen's Park Rangers. Headed away by Sharp. Here's Bardsley. In towards Ferdinand, great lead, Bradley Allen, 1-0. Less than eight minutes gone, and Queen's Park Rangers take the lead at the Stratford end. Sharp. It's into Hughes. Oh, he's done well to shield that. And he's done very well there. Sharp. Oh, and hit the other post. Giggs. And it ran away from Keane. Sharp. Oh, what an escape for Queen's Park Rangers. Well, Mark Hughes deserves something there. And Manchester United certainly did. Up. Taking the bypass round McDonald. Look at Giggs in space to his right. Cantona goes in alone. It was a pretty good decision too. And just when you need something special from somebody special, Eric Cantona provides it. Wave after wave of Manchester United attack. Lapping against the Queen's Bar Raiders penalty area now. In goes Keane, in goes Hughes. It was inevitable. United just too hot to handle. An 11-point gap at the end of October with English football asking, who can stop them? United and the rest. A derby date with City and Wimbledon at home looked slippery in November. But it wasn't banana skins troubling United. It was international incidents. The Wednesday before the City game, United had walked into what seemed like a war zone in Turkey. Galatasaray in the European Cup, a welcome from hell. These are some of the most intimidating fans in world football and the riot police seem to know the score before anybody else did. Outside, red flares and a white hot atmosphere. No way out, they chanted. Then came the sensation in the circle. Eric Cantona allegedly involved in a fracas with an official. Cantona protested innocence but was later sent off and there was no point protesting in Turkey. On this night, there were no winners. Cantona, the so-called villain on the Wednesday, turned hero in time for Derby Day. It was great to be home. Manchester City uh, unbeaten at home since Brian Horton took up the reins in succession to Peter Reid. But let me just tell you about Manchester United. If you think that their class is sometimes over-exaggerated, their last 20 league games, they've won 18, drawn one and lost one. 55 points out of 60. Takes your breath away, Andy. Oh, it's ridiculous, Mark. <laughs> Thanks. For United to Lee Sharp. Owens ball, and Keane has caught them out again. And Coton protected the goal. Sheeran, right to the right. Quinn to his left, Phelan making up some ground, Sheeran still on the ball, and Quinn comes in, and plants another header past Peter Schmeichel, and scores for the third derby in a row, and Manchester City have drawn first blood here at Main Road. McMahon, in goes Quinn again! It's Cantona closing in. Manchester United are back in it. A suicidal moment for City. Kanchelskis put away by Keane. Is he in for the equaliser here? Tony Coton gives a very positive answer for Manchester City. The answer is no. Now Quinn, Edgehill to the right. White wants it slipped through, just like that. And Schmeichel 
celebrated Coton's heroics. Well, maybe that was seen in the match. Cantona again. It's almost as if he's got a baton in his hand and he's conducting the orchestra. Diggs. Oh, that's a super ball, and Cantona is there where it matters. Two for him. Two for United. 2-2 two -two is the score. Well, there you go. If you see in midfield, you can't get goals like that. Wanders into the penalty area. And that's a better sight if you're a Manchester United fan. Eric Cantona in there where it hurts. Oh, that shot delightfully delivered. Porter's absolutely thrilled by a sensational second-half showing. Well, I said, if this little young right-back doesn't get some protection, they're going to get exposed. Again, it's Erwin and Sharp that combine. Hughes takes all the bullets, takes the players away, and Keane comes on. Roy Keane special, late into the box, meets it absolutely perfectly, and he slides it into the far corner. What a comeback. I think basically we were on top in the first half, but we gave away two silly goals. Manager said, keep plugging away, and look, yeah, there's a chance that we always get back into it. We just kept playing away, and luckily enough, you know, we've done the business. Down 2 0 at half time was a travesty. We played so well the whole game, but we made mistakes, and uh, we're punished for it. But the second half, superb performance. So, a corner which Kanchelskis will take. Sharp was uh, offering an option. And up from the backs, Pallister! Well, he doesn't often score, and when he does, he certainly relishes it. Trickers is down the right-hand side, a little more direct now, and Holdsworth has found Fashionu, and Fashionu's found the net, and it's one each. Kanchelskis. Well, eventually, two or three defenders managed to put Kanchelskis down to the ground. United in a hurry to take it and try and catch Wimbledon out. Here's Cantona. It's in towards Hughes! Oh, yes, a huge special. Within two minutes, United are back in front. And it's a Mark Hughes special. How many times have we seen him do that? Cantona. Good ball down the line to Kanchelskis, and he's got the pace, and he's going. All alone. And he doesn't need any help. Brilliant goal from Andre Kanchelskis. Gary Pallister. He's as uh, comfortable in possession as most midfield players up and down the country. Quite happy to take possession in this kind of area. And he's going to have a go this time. Oh! Well, he doesn't do that very often. Maybe he'll try it a little more regularly now. Craig Forrest had to push it away. Kanchelskis. Yaud's got in the header. This is Paul Ince, good drive! And they're getting closer. Ryan Giggs, hands on hips, is a candidate. Cantona is there too. It'll be Giggs. Oh! Whisker away! Hughes is there! And Craig Forrest again has the final word. But he didn't have a say in what Ryan Giggs produced then. So unlucky. Derby. Time for Atherton. Into Lunlove. Good save by Schmeichel. Just reaching it and turning it round the post. Hints. Irwin. Giggs. Two for company. As ever, really, these days, isn't it? Atherton does well to keep the danger out. And then the corner flag comes to the assistance of Giggs. Dennis Irwin. Well, that's a teaser, Cantona, and it's more than a teaser, it's the setup for the goal. Lovely header. Irwin with an awful ball to defend against. Goalkeeper and defenders unsure. Cantona certain. Atherton. The urge forward. Williams flick. Marston, oh, off the bar. And Giggs clears the danger, and I think that'll go down as a brilliant save by Schmeichel. Let's watch again. Marsden, goalward bound, and yes, Schmeichel helps it onto the bar.
The gap had increased to an amazing 14 points by the end of an unbeaten November. They said the title race would be over by Christmas, though nobody at United seriously believed that. It was the festive period, and what a testing period, with Newcastle, Villa and Blackburn served up on the Christmas menu. Through experience, you've always looked upon the December programme, particularly the Boxing Day and New Year fixtures, as the shaping of the week, I always feel. And after that, you can safely say who's going to be involved and who's not going to be involved, really, realistically. And we looked also looked at the types of games we had and who we were playing and said to ourselves, well, that is a big month for us. Kanchelskis to Parker. Again, well read by Culverhouse. And they're making it very hard for United to get through. Hughes is up for this, and Giggs comes in. Oh, it's there! Cantona swings the ball in then from the right. It goes beyond Mark Hughes, and Giggs stretches. And what about that? And you have to say, splendid finish by the Welshman. But you also have to say that it's come against the run of play on the half hour. Oh, there's a chance here on the equaliser. Fox surely overran it on the first touch. And the follow-up shot's in. Chris Sutton has equalised within a minute. Cantona. Three the other way. Irwin. Ince. Giggs. Oh, lovely. Cantona. McLean. people applaud a memorable move look at this from Giggs lifted it up for Cantona knocked on beautifully Brian McClare who always seems to do well against Norwich in recent seasons he scored against them so many times and he gets there to volley that pass gun and there goes Sutton on the other side of Pallister oh, and the linesman's flagging penalty the linesman on this side put his flag across his chest. And he lashes it past Schmeichel to make it 2 2. Hughes always seems to be able to find himself some room in a tight space. Here's McClare in a bit more space. No offside flag. Looking up the right option. Hughes! Oh, beauty! What a superb strike from Mark Hughes. Pallister, Hughes, good touch, Ince, Sharp, goal, brilliant, what a lovely move from Manchester United. Now a goal, the volume raised, corner in, Schmeichel punches, Cantona back helping on the edge of his own box, Sharp, Giggs, Cantona, he was on the edge of his own box a second ago, and now he's on the edge of the Sheffield United box. And he scored! Oh, superbly done! From one end to the other. That's a run of about, what, 70 yards? There he is there on the edge of his box. He clears it up to Sharp and then makes himself an option for Giggs. And he's deceptively quick enough to get away from the Chef United defence, keep his head and finish off the inside of the post. A brilliant goal. Taken by Beardsley inside his clerk. Ince. Still on though, Beardsley. Good goalkeeping by Peter Schmeichel, really spread himself well. And he was right on top of Peter Beardsley. Newcastle hunting packs. Got the finesse of the uh, Dutch side that did that so effectively as yet. It might come. Manchester United under a lot of pressure. But here's Giggs. Good shot, good goal! Paul Ince, his first of the season. After a lot of pressure in the second half by Newcastle United, suddenly Manchester United snatch a goal. Cracking shot from Paul Ince, past the outstretched hand of Mike Hooper. Pallister. Lovely header from Cantonada, sharp. 
Good stop. Well forward was uh, Hooper. Well, Newcastle, Newcastle are concerned a very different match from the one against Liverpool. That was won by half time. This will take a deal of winning now. Beardsley. Oh, what a good ball. Lee does well with the cross. Cole! It's one apiece. Well, they're halfway there. Benison once more. Bit short by Bracewell. And this is Ince. And Giggs waits. The pass is behind them all. And Keane fires wide. And I think you know exactly how Alec Ferguson feels. It was still a well-earned point to keep the nightlights of Manchester burning brightly at Old Trafford. On the 19th of December, a special early Christmas gift. Sponsors Sharp announced there to extend their current deal with the club, the longest-running sponsorship association in British football. Chairman Martin Edwards delighted to put the final touches to the contract. A successful business, Manchester United. Happy Christmas. Now Bruce. Such a major figure at Manchester United in the past. Need to catch the eye, I think, for Villa here. Gonna have a lot of work to do at the back. Parker threading it forward for Kanchelskis. Nicely weighted. Kanchelskis with the cross. Katana climbing! Off the post. Luck with Villa. McGrath hoofed it to safety. Katana so close. Amazing when you put a cross of quality in. The Villa were caught short in area, but I thought it would be Matt, and that's why. He's giving us the closest moment to a goal. Here come Manchester United again with Mark Hughes. It's got a foot in. Sharp. Cantona knew he couldn't head for goal. Got it back into an area where Kanchelskis was likely to reach the ball, which he did. Parker. Keane. And Villa are struggling here. Cantona! Manchester United 1, Aston Villa 0. In the 22nd minute, he's hit the post and now he's hit the back of the net. No surprise this, Mark. They get caught three against two in the right and also they get Daly and Atkinson defending in an unusual position. But you ride the luck a little bit. Three players, Teal, Barrett and McGrath, oh, opportunities to clear it because through Teal's legs at the near post Barrett can only touch it away from McGrath and Eric Cantona doesn't miss chances like this but this Manchester United defensive unit and one of them Bruce puts Cantona away he's in, he scored it's the game over now Eric Cantona has made absolutely sure Run, you can see it, he loses Barrett. I still think, well, Paul McGrath's got a chance here, but look at Cantona. Not only does he get the touch perfect, he manages to keep his balance. Hughes. Oh, this will be hard on Villa if they concede yet another one here. And they might. Barrett's given it to him. You can contain Manchester United for so long, but when they break free, look what damage they do. Two goals in a matter of seconds. Aston Villa can still go off the pitch with their heads reasonably high, but the scoreline looks so much worse when it's seen around the world, which it will be, and taken into account. Villa and United, who were so close to each other last season. Oh, they've got one back, and it's near who deserves it more than any other player for Aston Villa. Probably, uh, probably all, all the top three or four sides to play over Christmas. So that's what I say. If we can come out of that, that's 13 points clear. That's been hard for people to catch us. But already indications the Blackburn Rovers would represent the real challenge to United's crown. The two sides met at Old Trafford in the bleak midwinter. But you know what? Even Santa Claus wears red and white. Snapping into the tackle, Gallagher against Pallister. And still Gallagher, he's got away here. And he's given Blackburn Rovers the lead, just as he did in this fixture last season. And Kenny Dalglish leads the applause. Gallagher, once again getting it back. 
Cantona tipping it on. And sharp shooting. Blackburn furious with the referee, but the whistle didn't go before then. Pallister. And Sharp has taken this in his stride. Giggs going towards the near post. And bodies around him. Blackburn smother the danger, but at the expense of a corner. Colin Henry again was magnificent in there. He knew he had to make the tackle count against Giggs at the near post. And he did so. Look at the goalkeeper, Mark. He's on the edge of the box. Has come up. Well, it happens all the time on the continent. You won't see it very often here. Pallister gets the header in. Flowers makes the save. And Paul Ince has put it away. Well, it's the sort of smile that we saw when Blackburn were last here. And Schmeichel, well, he had to be marked. Will he take credit for his part in the penalty area? And no who could have been out of the game by now is very much in it well the goalkeeper doesn't come Palliser gets the header in Flowers makes a magnificent save from McClare but Paul Ince is right on the spot he smashes it into the net Palliser's climbs there that's a great save and the goalkeeper when he's looking for a bit of luck doesn't get any but Paul Ince now what's that three goals in these last three games is it what a month it's been for him. Well, we've lost two points today. That's the important thing. Mm. And it just uh, it tells you that it's a hard league to win. And we've done fantastically well and we're not getting carried away. That's the important thing. Our players deserved that point today. If one team deserved to win, it was us because we tried to win the match. And that's support. If you're going to win the league, you've got to win matches. And you've got to try and win them. We were the only team that was trying to win the match. People keep saying that um, Manchester United have already won it. Um, I don't know whether Manchester United think that way in the programme today. There's conflicting interest depending on what article you read in the programme. But I'm sure Fergie doesn't think they've already won it. And I certainly don't think they've already won it. Meanwhile, Andrei Konchalskis had come back into the side. The Ukrainian's gift for Christmas had been a newborn son, Andrei Andreevich. He was one happy daddy. <laughs> Challenged by Bruce, denying hold and sets Konchalskis away. Sharp, good challenge there by Johnson, but it's broken for Konchalskis again. Cantona, Konchelskis, real chance, good save, Hallworth, but in the end, the first goal comes away, the Russian, and Konchelskis gives Manchester United the lead. It's Holden. And still, not a bad ball in either. Irwin, not the best of clearances, and Graham Sharp levels. 1-1. again with a searching ball forward but uh, Bruce once again reading it lovely flick by Giggs Konchelskis on the chase my word look at him go all the way tumbles in the box penalty once he stretches the legs and gets going there are a few quicker than he and a penalty really the only outcome apart from a shot on goal Cantona 2-1 cool as you like Holden will take the free kick. And it's gone in! Unbelievable! Well, he's certainly delighted. I don't think he meant it, but Schmeichel was caught. 2 2. Irwin's corner. Bruce! Brilliant! Brilliant run, great timing, and a superb finish. Holdham again trying to pass the way out of trouble, but it's broken down, and Cantona's released Giggs, and there's no offside. Giggs still, and finds the net, and look, he's hardly can break into a smile, Giggs. His teammates are happy enough. Cantona. Looking for the right ball in. Sharp, Keane, Giggs, well, it's in the net. I don't know who's going to claim that. Giggs is peeling away. Keane's also claiming it too. Let's see if this gives us a clearer indication. Sharp's header down. Well, I would probably guess Giggs.
The goals were pouring in from everywhere. 100 goals and 100 points in a calendar year, glittering centuries. More importantly, the lead at the top of the Premiership had been maintained over the tricky Christmas period. Blackburn had emerged as definite contenders, and with a January programme as tough as they come, it was clear there was plenty of mileage left in the Championship race. But who could stop United? Leeds, champions two years ago, merely came to spoil at Old Trafford, despite having the clearest chance of a chess-like tactical battle. Chris Fairclough skimming the bar. Then to Liverpool in the season's cruncher, and Anfield starved of success, firing an atmosphere that set alight a game of the highest quality. One of the truly great games. Mike gets there again. Redknapp, who hoisted it. Bruce has the shot. Liverpool block. Cantona. celebrations here but really you can understand the joy for Manchester United and Steve Bruce well how many times has Steve Bruce produced this type of header for Manchester United Alex Ferguson won the first time he brought Manchester United here back in 1986 and of course he won the last time he brought them here last March the side are winning again and they're winning by two goals to nil. A glorious goal from Ryan Giggs. Well, this is incredible. I think that's the first time we've ever seen a free kick given from outside the box. And United don't have... Ends up in the back of the net. And even by Manchester United standards, this is simply stunning. This is incredible, Mark. They didn't have a player. Look, they don't have a player anywhere near the box. He must have so much confidence in Dennis Irwin's ability and he didn't disappoint them. This is a beautifully struck free kick. Look at the bend in the ball, you can see it, look at the accuracy of it. It's a magnificent free kick from Dennis Irwin. Bruce Grobelaar has had to pick out the ball from his net, put there by Steve Bruce, by Ryan Giggs and by Dennis Irwin. Dix, Redner. Clough. Oh, well, they're replying kind. 3-1. The cop come alive. Right coming forward. Rush. Can Clough get to this one? He can. It's 3-2. Nigel Clough again. This is absolutely incredible stuff. What a marvellous response from Liverpool. Fowler. And this masterpiece of a match has produced another fantastic goal. Keane's cross. Oh, Hughes! United comes early in the second and Mark Hughes is there again the near post ball catches Tottenham out Parker took the throw and it's Roy Keane who turns Kasky the ball coming along the line oh it's gone off the defender in fact that one from Hughes but in a season of wonderful moments, there was a moment that saddened the hearts of the footballing public worldwide, the death of Sir Matt Busby, the man who'd built the modern-day club from the ashes of war. In many ways, Busby was Manchester United, a visionary man, a man who believed in the ability of youth, the man who gave us the Busby babes. Busby, who survived the tragedy of Munich to build a new side that contained some of the greatest footballers ever to grace Old Trafford. A side that later went on to become the first English club to win the European Cup in 1968. The legend of Sir Matt Busby will live on at Old Trafford forever. People say, will life go on? The life's got to go on. It doesn't really need to always go on. I mean, tomorrow I think it should stop for a day because he was a wonderful man. And but the game will go on. Unfortunately, it will be going. I'd rather it didn't, to be honest with you. A lone piper led out Manchester United and Everton two days after the death of Sir Matt. You could have heard a pin drop as Old Trafford paid its respects to a footballing giant.
marker to Kenchelskis. Oh, he's got free. Cantona, good save. Neville Southall. Great reflexes, and Cantona's denied after a super near post header. Kicks his corner. Cantona off the line. Ebrill it was. Great header. Beat Southall, but not the man who was there to do just this very job. Hugging the far post. Parker. Keane. Got away from Ablett. Hughes calling for it. Giggs arriving. 1 0. 26 minutes, and the Giggs and in celebration that heralds the first goal of the game. Long time in coming, really. United have had chance after chance, but fittingly, it's the youngest man on the field that gets it. And he'd be particularly pleased because it was with his head. And it was certainly a good header too, taking it beyond Neville Southall. Good look up before he played it, Cantona. Oh, brilliant, oh dear. It's the outside of the post, seemed to have done everything right. Brilliant skills, the crowd on their feet. That's the kind of thing that Eric Cantona is famed for in the game. Control, turn, shot, all in one movement, denied by the post. Ince. Kinchelskis, Ablett coming away to try and block him, deflection off the bar. They're not going to get a second there either. Kinchelskis denied this time. Everton trying to build. But uh, once again, a red wall blocking their path forward. It was Bruce that intercepted. Here's Kanchelskis. Bruce has continued the run. Cantona to Hughes. Here's Cantona. Good save from Southall. And again, Cantona denied. But some marvellous approach play from United. The crowd still revelling in a terrific performance by United. And it's going to end here now with Cantona. Surely this time, no. Well, it's not been his day, but it's certainly been a fitting tribute to Sir Matt Busby. Well, he'd have been pleased at the entertainment, I'm sure of that. He'd have been pleased at the effort we put in, the commitment was terrific. But he'd have been a rueful smile and saying to himself, Ali, I've seen him before. The chances we missed in the game were incredible. It had been a momentous January in every sense. United a staggering 16 points clear of Blackburn, having played three games more. The FA Cup schedule disrupted the league programme in February, leaving just two away trips to London for two great matches. Oh, look at that. Airmail from Schmeichel to Konchelskis. Now, what can he make of it? There's your answer. It's taken 19 minutes. It's Andrei Kanchelskis' first goal of 1994. Wilkins looking for Ferdinand. Ooh, and it just bounced and skipped away from him. Penrice, caught by Key, penalty. I don't think that either of them made contact with it. Keane can claim he was going for the ball, but it's difficult to prove when you don't actually get it. Clive Wilson, once at Manchester City, a goal against Manchester United. A bit of an event, the first in five games. It'll be Irwin. Wall did well. I think it was Barker who got up high to block it. Irwin getting on with it, though. And what a cross that is. Captain R! Queen's Park Rangers were level for less than two minutes. Eric Cantona rises above the crowd. Parker making it hot for Holloway. Wilkins. Holloway. Ferdinand. Yes! Let's Ferdinand strikes back. But we'd witnessed that many players around me, actually, until I seen it on the television. I just thought that I got the ball and just run straight to the goal and just passed it past the keeper. So um, I didn't think it was that particularly good goal, really, until I seen it on the television. And I realised there was about six players around me. <laughs>
It was Giggs' roommate Paul Ince very much the main feature at West Ham, returning to a barrage of abuse at his old club under the watchful eye of England boss Terry Venables. To Ince's credit, it was his true character that came through in the end. Here's Cantona for United, and now Keane with Mark Hughes down the middle, McClare joining him now. Oh, and Hughes is there! And it's a goal! Alvin Martin stretched and missed. And inside six minutes, Manchester United take the lead. The break is by Roy Keane. Alvin Martin here is stretching for the ball, doesn't make it, and Mark Hughes prods it over the line to give the league champions and league leaders the edge early in this match. Marsh takes it, the ball is in there, oh, and that is a fantastic save by Schmeichel. That was a fantastic exhibition of instinctive goalkeeping. Burrows. Holmes. Morley comes near post. Chapman is further over here. Chapman! Yes! Lee Chapman has equalised for West Ham. the veteran striker oh and he's now in again on Schmeichel and a chance here for Holmes perhaps Chapman again they're all over the place Holmes what an opportunity here Holmes there Morley Morley's got it 2-1 West Ham turn the match round in a couple of minutes Now a chance for United, perhaps, and McCloskey didn't make it, Hughes, oh, and in, it's in, and somewhere in there is Paul Ince, I think, it's 2-2, and Ince seemed to get in there in the crowd, and maybe they've saved themselves, two minutes to go, look how many West Ham players there are there, Hughes against Breaker, here comes Ince, yes it is, the former West Ham player, what a story. But the story of the championship race suddenly found the plot twisting and turning. With Blackburn on a roll, the lead at the top was cut to seven points. It was a straight fight between the champions and the team that Jack built. Alex Ferguson felt his side had come through the toughest part of the campaign. But in March, Chelsea's Gavin Peacock was back to ruffle a few more feathers. Peacock had scored the winner in the league at Stamford Bridge and did it again. Suddenly, it seemed the United nerves were becoming a little frayed. In the FA Cup, Peter Schmeichel was sent off controversially to mar a brilliant victory over Charlton. United began to feel that fate was conspiring against them, although they still managed victory against Sheffield Wednesday in the Coca-Cola Cup semi-final, Ryan Giggs steering them brilliantly to victory before a rematch in the league. A little sense of excitement as Eric Cantona gets the ball. What can he create for Manchester United? Well, he spots a gap and Ryan Giggs dashes through there, draws the goalkeeper, can he finish it? Yes, he can. Just under a quarter of an hour gone, and Manchester United a goal up. Pallister wins everything in the air. Ryan Giggs responding to the chance from the fans. Flick from Cantona to Hughes. Wow! What a goal from Mark Hughes. Seeing that there was nothing on there from 30 yards, he deserves the... Salute from the fans. Look at this. A Mark Hughes special. A thunderbolt. Pressman got his fingertips to this, but uh, there isn't a goalkeeper in the world who could stop the power from Hughes. Fantastic goal. Well, we'll be uh, talking about that one for a long time. Two goals in two minutes for Manchester United. Giggs the scorers, it's the Welsh connection. Hughes again to Paul Parker. And Charles Giz is, uh, is in a great deal of the ball. Finds Ince with that pass, and Ince finds the corner of the net. 3-0. What's of the Wednesday substitutes. It's been a source of inspiration for them, and they're desperately lacking that as... 
Pallister intervenes. Now Cantona, they've left him alone. That's a big mistake. A big mistake. Chasing their tails, they just can't get hold of the ball. Parker inside to Ince, to Cantona. Is there something on here? Yes, there is! A fifth goal, a brilliant goal. And he scores his second goal of the game. Ince with the challenge, here's Hughes, Cantona. We might have thread it through quickly into the path of Hughes. Kukline couldn't cut it out. Here's Roy Keane, and that's number one. It's taken just 12 minutes to arrive. A little bit of space for Frank McAvenny. Away from Parker. Not from Bruce, though. Nyholt with a shot, took a deflection, it's in! Luke Nyholt has equalised for Swindon Town. Ince. Gigs again. On its way to Keane. But uh, Morlock's put his ground well. Irwin. Came off some of it. McClare trying to make something of it. Ince. Oh! Beautifully struck. Beautiful goal. A Paul Ince puts Manchester United back in front. Clean as a whistle. It's towards Kilcline. Michael not only took it with consummate ease, but had set Manchester United going forward in the blink of an eye. Cantona tackled though by Monka. Didn't like it, got it back. Oh, now, the referee was very, very close to that. Monka lies on the ground. Cantona under the microscope again. There's a card coming out. It's red, and Cantona goes. Out of the match, and as it happens, out of the big showdown at Blackburn in a fortnight's time. And towards Scott, Michael comes, makes a punch, chance for Whitbread, chance for Scott, chance for Sanchez, chance for Cantona! The press couldn't believe their luck. A tightening title race and a Cantona sending off. Then down at Arsenal, the story became even juicier. Cantona booed every time he gets the ball. I'm sure that doesn't surprise him, but I'm sure most of the, uh, the calls are untranslatable anyway. Parker to Hughes, tries a shot and Siemens lost it. And Lee Sharp has put it in. Lee Sharp is back. And back with a vengeance. A free kick given in a position which is uh, more dangerous than a corner. It's Merson to take it. A pack six yard box, and I think that comes off the toe end of Gary Pallister. Parker finds Giggs. Hops it out to Cantona. And the boos ring around again, but he puts one in, almost wipes the smile off the faces, and Manchester United have now. It's Lee Sharp again. Eric Cantona, the creator. And Lee Sharp with the old boogie-woogie. Sally. Dixon. Merson weighs up the shot, and scores! Well, the United defence went to sleep then, and Paul Merson woke them up with a loud bang. But it was left to referee Vic Callow to cause the real sensation of the game, having booked Eric Cantona already. He dipped for the red card when Cantona collided with Arsenal captain Tony Adams. Adams didn't bat an eyelid, but the referee saw things differently. The reaction of the United players was one of desperation, knowing Cantona was looking down the barrel of a five-match ban. They needed him, and they knew it. Cantona was available for the Coca-Cola Cup final with Aston Villa, but defeat was made worse when Andrei Konchelskis got his marching orders for handball. The referee had little option, but options for Manchester United were running out, with suspensions mounting up at a critical phase. 
For once the players looked a little tired. The coveted treble was now just a fantasy. Maybe the success of winning, of being involved in every competition was taking its toll. There was no point protesting. Steve Bruce probably knew it. It was time to regroup and dig deep. And with people writing them off once again, the champions typically came storming back against their greatest rivals. but what a simple way to score a goal it's the old near post corner delivery by sharp excellent header by Ince, instant it's amazing now all the talk of this treble that thing is gone now you see it's the strains off the players and, and in a way uh, there is a bit of pressure when we start tra talking about trebles now we're, we're not chasing any record and it's never been achieved but after the same uh, thing we're all, always after throughout the season that's the league title but it was getting tighter all the time, just six points ahead of Blackburn now and United's next game, Blackburn away at Ewood Park. It was a match that threatened to turn the championship upside down. It had the feel of a title decider. In reality, there were too many more points at stake for it to be that. Both teams had changed in makeshift dressing rooms round the back before making their entrance to a half-built stadium. But they were still the top two sides in the country and this was still a great occasion. Ripley. May. All trying to steer it off and has done. Sherwood. And Shearer's free. And Alan Shearer scores for Blackburn Rovers. The challengers have taken the lead inside the first minute of the second half. Keen with what has been his train trademark, the run from midfield, sharp with the cross. Kanchelskis, what a shot! An amazing shot, all credit to Tim Flowers for keeping it out. Giggs coming across, leaves it for Ince. Oh, he mishit it, it hit the post. But we've seen Kanchelskis connect too cleanly. Ince to strike it with no uh, cleanliness at all, and Flowers had no chance of saving it because of that. Well, it's off his kneecap, I'm sure. Ripley. Shearer chasing it on. He's behind Palace, Can't pull him down. There's the inevitable outcome. They're off the bench. Blackburn Rovers. Shearer strikes again. 2 0. It's not right to say you don't be affected. You're not affected by the pressure. Everyone gets affected by it. We handled it well last year. Um, and they will need to handle it now. We have a home game on Monday. So we'll have to get our job done properly and uh, take each one as it comes after that. Lee Sharp. Keane. Ince. Bruce. Giggs. Yes! He made it look so easy. Brennan. Oh, it's a good turn. It's McCarthy. Brilliant. Wonderful goal. Sean McCarthy. Schmeichel given no chance. And a chance at last for the big man, Dion Dublin. It's his first start in a league game this season. And the former Cambridge man who broke his leg soon after coming here is now going to have to play the role of saviour, really, if he can. Hughes, Keen. Mr. Going in again. He's got gigs outside him here. Kanchelskis. Oh, and it in Dublin. Fantastic contribution by the substitute. Having just come on. It's 2 1. the cross by Giggs and Dion Dublin pounced I said when he came on he was patient he's waited nearly all season to get this opportunity and he may have got them off the hook here because the 
This is Giggs, put through by Hughes, into square, and it's gone in. It's 3-1, it's two goals in a minute. It's going to be Holden, is it, to bend it in? It is. And there's a chance there for the man who just came on, and Sharp! Yes, it's 3-2! It's Graham Sharp for Oldham. United just with the better of Oldham thanks to Dion Dublin on a substitute, a trend that continued in the FA Cup. The Reds needing a replay against Joe Royal's side to go through to a Wembley date with Chelsea. In the league, meanwhile, the small matter of Wimbledon. Blackburn, who'd kicked off earlier in the day, had already lost at Southampton, but United failed to take advantage when typically John Fashionew crashed the party. But cometh the hour, cometh the man. Eric Cantona's five-match ban had run its course in time for Derby Day, and it seemed inevitable that somehow he'd be the nation's focus once again. That's the ball that they want from Hughes to Kanchelskis. Andre Kanchelskis, Cantona is there. Kanchelskis, Cantona. Well, it's taken them 35 minutes to get the combination right, to get the perfect scenario. It's a square pass, very close to being offside, you know. But the pass, I think, is square, and that keeps them onside. And that's a simple tap-in from the man who returns today. And here's Cantona closing in for a second. There it is. Well, they've done what you said they mustn't do. And that's where's another right on the stroke of our time. First reaction here was, is there an offside? He's trying to hold, he's trying to hold, there's the pass. It's David Brightwell on the far side. And I think he's so concerned with Kinchelskis' pace that he's gone back. He doesn't want to get caught for pace. He's gone back, and that's proved fatal, because everyone else is up. And did anyone ever expect this guy to miss? I certainly didn't. Keane. This was intended for, for uh, Strachan from McAllister. Tjelskis. Hughes. Will that work for him? Mark Hughes. Kanchelskis. 1 0 Manchester United. Little smile on his face. And there was a fortuitous moment in that move for Mark Hughes. Kanchelskis, who started it with a diagonal run and was able to place the ball just where he wanted to. Well, the expressions were an adequate summary of that goal. And the smiles now, as Manchester United know, for sure that they have the three points. <laughs> and a little routine between Giggs and Ince. Lovely return by Hughes and Giggs there ahead of Kelly. And Manchester United lead by two to nothing. They'd saved their best to last as only true champions can do. What a performance against Leeds, one of the best home sides in the Premiership. It had come down to three games left and suddenly there was one hand on a second successive championship trophy. Blackburn were hoping for a miracle and Chris Kawamia almost supplied one. United going behind against Ipswich at Portman Road. Peter Schmeichel blamed himself for letting the shot slip and then later on found himself in a collision with Kawamia, the goal scorer, which resulted in serious injury. Peter Schmeichel heading for a fall. By the look on his face, there was real agony too. Les Seeley had been number two all season, but now Gary Walsh took his chance. United never looked back. Someone's got to take charge here for Ipswich. Whelan was confusing walk. Kanchelskis, Cantona, 1-1. A defensive disaster for Ipswich Town, and they've paid the price. Well, quite simply, John Watt should have been dealing with this. But watch this for a quality ball. Absolutely sensational cross from Andrew Kanchelskis. And a dwell on the cross mark, because at the end of it, the head is relatively simple. Cantona's not going to miss it. United looking for a second here. Giggs! His 17th of the season. Well, if this is the kind of defending that 
Rangers have been doing, Martin. It's no sir. Look at them. They're standing around what, watching the play. A simple throw in. Jake's attacks the near post. That's a fine finish, but they just go to sleep. Full marks to Keane. Bright and alert and produced a good ball. And full marks to Giggs for the finish. But the defending, well, it was pretty poor to say the least. The experience of last year and the year before helps us. And they've been down the road so many times that um, when the pressure was applied and when we needed to win, we win. And that's, that, that's what pressure does. Rather like last season, it was another side, this time Coventry, who helped make sure United were champions again, winning 2-1 against Blackburn. Monday, May the 2nd, the date, a day of celebration for Manchester United, with fans gathering in the city centre and outside Old Trafford. Two days later, Southampton came to Old Trafford fighting for their premiership life. They were guests at a very special celebration, although the crowning glory, the championship trophy, was still in cotton wool to be presented at the last home game against Coventry. Keane making the run. First test for the Saints defence and Keane's round the back. Hughes is waiting, so is Cantona. That's Giggs. Oh, and Cantona! How did he miss it? And he's perplexed, but Dave Besant must be the most relieved man in the stadium. This is Giggs. Irwin. Kanchelskis. United puncture Southampton's resistance. It seemed to go inside Besant's near post. So many times he's curled them in from this position, but never perhaps of his team required a goal more badly at this critical stage of the season. It's indirect though, somebody will have to put their foot on it first if he's going to put it in. They have Letizia! Oh, what a save! And Cantona makes another run. Benali is shadow. It's set up inevitably by Cantona. An invitation for Hughes to shoot. But how many players are as deadly as Hughes from that range? It came in stoppage time. It takes Hughes' total for the season to 21. And it brings the flags out again all round Old Trafford. But there's flags. And then there's giant flags to celebrate the title and the final match of the league season against Coventry City. They came, they saw, they danced, they celebrated. A carnival end to a season so full of rich and memorable moments. The fans had also gathered to pay tribute to a man making his last appearance for Manchester United after 13 years in a red shirt. The greatest player of his generation for United and England and one of the most respected and decent men in the game. Brian Robson leading his side out just one more time. How fitting on such an occasion. up on the edge of the area for Robson's cross. Will it fall for Cantona? Oh, stupendous stop. To stop what would have arguably been the goal of the entire campaign. Well, why is it a goalkeeper saving this? Eh? That wouldn't that have been a fitting finale for the players' football of the year? Look how quickly he adjusts his body shape. Hits it perfectly, and I tell you, Big Augie hasn't produced many better saves than that. OK. Morgan having a good look at him. 
backing off. Cantona, McKee in behind Morgan. Dublin. That's what, he's given. Count. That's what he's given. He's annoyed with the linesman because the linesman didn't signal. Dublin saying it was ahead. Dublin! Mikrozovic has lost it. Roy Coyne cashes in, but the flag is up. And it's no goal. Still no no. Well, he's not going to get one. Dublin hits this very well. Who's pulled off the line of attack? McClare's very aware now. Is it Keane? Oh, it's very tight. I mean, if he's given McClare in the bottom right-hand corner, then that's ridiculous. OK. And it's Brian Robson. McClare inside him. And Robson's there again. And it was neither a goal-scoring shot or a cross that connected with Cantona, tantalising him in between the two. Everybody desperate for Robson to score what would have been his 100th goal for the club. He didn't get on the score sheet, but his reward was a special tribute from the fans, one of the most emotional moments of the whole season. Nobody deserves it more. Steve Bruce and Robson went up to collect the second successive championship trophy. Two titles in a row, and even sweeter, I'm sure, the second time around. Manchester United continue. Alec Ferguson appreciates that between the current captain and Captain Fantastic. coming forward. Cantona waiting in the middle for him. Will it come to Cantona? It's a great goal! And Roy Keane has put Manchester United ahead. Oh, a good ball. Ines now. Knocks it back. Oh! They scored! Slavonos, the defender. Lee Sharp, looking to get to the byline, knock it back again. It's in there for Manchester United. And that man has done it again, Roy Keane. Giggs, oh, beautiful play by Giggs. Cross coming in, a slip, there's a chance for Cantona, it's three! 
Giggs has made a little run, a jockeying run with a keeper. Bruce has scored! <laughs> Sharps free kick. Bruce is head up. He's done it again. <laughs> Flag has stayed down. Shallow goes through. Shallow with a great chance of scoring here. Does so. Mark Hughes reached the situation well, has little support. Hampton up. Nice turn from Robson and the goal! The old maestro gives Manchester United the lead that they wanted. Alistair blunders forward. He's going to be tightly marked, bit of pinching and pushing and shoving. Little flick at the near post and his second goal! Trying to make amends. Comes to Arif, a shot, and a goal! And what a great goal that was! Old Trafford is silenced! You think that uh, the chaps in the yellow shirts are at home if you just tuned in. Arif. Ball through. Mayhem! And a goal to the Turks! Peter Schmeichel is absolutely livid at Lee Martin. To Guy carrying the ball, has the skill to do it alone, but this time it's Bruce who gets the challenge in. Manchester United sitting back, they've got two teams at the moment, one attacking team, one defensive team. And Peter Schmeichel is off the post, it's a goal! And the Turks have scored a third! They cannot believe it! Lee Martin. say 90% of the Manchester United crosses and there have been a lot of them tonight the found Galatasaray heads Cantona oh yes oh Cantona just when the game seems to be running away from Manchester United up pops Cantona totally unmarked and brings a smile back to the fans faces if not the managers Cantona Robs. Turn forward to Giggs. That's a great ball. Giggs in here. Oh, oh my word, that was so close. The referee's had a look at his watch. He's got to have had a bit more time than this, surely. He hasn't. He hasn't had it any. And time has run out for Manchester United. They are out of the European Cup. Galatasaray have completed the greatest triumph in the history of Turkish football. Champions of England are sadly beaten. Steve can shoot from this kind of angle and does produce a shot and produces a spectacular goal. He shot inside Orlikson. Plus towards Dublin. Good header from Dublin and a good goal from Dublin. So simple when it came for Manchester United. Jen to Foley. Steen's on the case. And Steen is just so sharp, it's unbelievable. So, 0-0 at half-time suits Stoke City. If it stays like this, they're through to the next round. Do the, uh, the chances of United staying blank as slim. The Premier League champions have only been shut out at home once in the last 12 months. seconds of the second half will there be the deciding one in the last few seconds Hughes finds McLean sealed it there are some targets to aim for 
It's deep towards Pallister and the header from Bruce. And the combination of the two centre-halves works. Hughes, sharp, brilliantly done. Oldfield trying to stop him, it'll reach McClare, 2-0. United come away, and Andrei Konchelskis, and look at him go. He has support, Mark Hughes, here's Hughes. Thinks about what to do, finds Lee Sharp, no offside, 3-0. Roy Keane, out to the left is Mark Hughes. Out to the left also is you know who. And here he goes. It's a lovely ball in, McClare, Hughes on the line. 4-0. All hovering, loitering with intent. And it's teed up for Hill, straight into the wall. Second attempt in the net. Waiting for Bruce to make his sortie forward. There's Bruce! It's a good job they waited. Play from Hughes, good chip from Hughes, good goal from Hughes. Give him an inch and he'll give you a goal. Twelve minutes gone and Mark Hughes shows just why he has the reputation that he's got as one of the most lethal strikers from around 18 yards. Just United show just how good they can break out of defence. Kanchelskis flies, good shot from Kanchelskis. Oh, Hughes misses it, Giggs doesn't. And as they say in Wales, that's Ryan Giggs for you. Just a minute of the second half gone. And you have to say that uh, it looks well beyond Everton now. Ball over the top, Giggs has broken free. Goalkeeper off his line, Giggs holds it, squares it to Hughes. Now Giggs scores, no problem. And if you give Ryan Giggs an inch, he'll give you a goal. They gave him 10 yards then and caused all kind of mayhem in the Portsmouth defence. I know the finish was simple, he did all the hard work to get there, to cause the problems and then to score the goal. Christensen joining the attack, the big men go forward. Oh, and a goal! Cheeky as you like, Paul Walsh, terrible defending from Manchester United, but a brilliant set-piece from Portsmouth. Mark Hughes, Parker joins the attack, back into the area, Cantona's there! Trafford rises to salute him. Stimson. United's defence again tries to play the offside trap. It doesn't work this time. Schmeichel slips. There's a chance. As Schmeichel recovers, but it's not enough for Portsmouth. They've scored a second. And it's Paul Walsh again. The scourge of Manchester United. Giggs again for the umpteenth time delivers a corner kick. This time though, it creates a goal. Oh, Nielsen's back pass. Giggs might take full advantage of this. United, go ahead. is there again and finds Hughes and it's a good looking ball Keane's cross clean across the face of goal and it's a goal Brian McClare has scored for Manchester United with only four minutes gone gets it back from Carlton Palmer at least that was the intention but it was very well read 
and that's a great ball to release Kanchelskis, and they've got three forward on the break here, United, and they're galloping into spaces again, and it's crossed towards Kanchelskis. They've done it. It's a terrific goal, Alan. I don't know how he squeezed it in. Kanchelskis, he's, he's, he's not renowned for heading, but it's such a good ball from Ryan Giggs. And now Nielsen. He's rather lucky to get that back off Irwin. Keane denying him any room. Slides it through to Hyde. Schmeichel with a brave save. Comes back again to Hyde, and it's in! Sheffield Wednesday have got a goal back. Mark Williams. Good interception by Keane. And he finds Hughes. Good effort. Oh, my word. Just as you think Manchester United are rocking, they come back with another goal. Parker finding McClare. He's got Hughes and Giggs in the box. Hughes! They can order the Wembley suits now, all right. Outside of the boots. It's perfect for his Keane. Hughes. Will Keane be there to finish it off? Diving in. Pushed away by Bosnich. And cleared by a very relieved Aston Villa defence, but a lovely rippling move there by Manchester United. Just got the feeling that Villa have really got their foot hard down just to keep in this game at the moment. I think there's no doubt about it. The movement from Man United off the ball is better. But um, I, I, Villa are coming into it a little bit for me. They are indeed. Here's a chance now. It's a goal by Lillian Atkinson. in and goal Saunders might well have got a touch Kevin Richardson took the free kick and they are 2-0 ahead Irwin curling this one in Bosnich going for it gets a fist to it knocked back by Mark Hughes Atkinson bringing Daly in against the post Daly and Atkinson off the line, Daly Nackers, I think he might have given a penalty, he's given a penalty, he's given a penalty, it was handled on the line, and Villa now have a chance now, what will happen? It's red, it's a red card, Andre Kanchelskis is off, Dean Saunders looking for his second goal, and Villa's third, it's 3-1. Giggs, first run. Cantona out on the left flank. That's looking for Kanchelskis on the right. Keen, go! Cantona given the present and scores. And Rob Newman goes down in despair. He's hardly been in the match, the Frenchman, but his goal has surely won it for Manchester United. Go away. Kanchelskis coming in. Elkins head up and he goes to Canton. Ah! It's not a great here, magic of Eric Cantona. Watch the way he just backs away, it takes one touch to set it up. And what about the quality of the volley? Quite sensational. One to admire, time and time again. Come and get it if you want it. There's the acceleration. Oh, this is absolutely fantastic. Dennis Irwin. The whole cup tie summed up in an instant. Hughes! 
Hughes! What a save! Hughes! Goal! It's Mark Hughes! And Manchester United, having played for less than a minute with ten men, have taken the lead. You can't take your eyes off this game for a second. There's something happening all the time. It's Kanchelskis now. Giggs to his left, so is Cantona. Can he pick one of them out? Should he pick one of them out? No, he shouldn't. Kanchelskis makes it 2-0. It came off the goalkeeper, but it may well have put Manchester United into the semi-finals of the FA Cup. And Kanchelskis through the middle, onside, put there by Giggs. And Kanchelskis goes round John Bourne, and it's 3-0, and it's all over now. And the Russian World Cup player scores his second goal of the afternoon. Well, can charge and get back into it here. Robson, good run. Flipped on and the header by Lieber and it's in. They have come back. And Schmeichel didn't get that. Poynton! And all of them scored. Neil Poynton got in there and Schmeichel's made a bad mistake. It's Butt. It's only a minute to go, it's come to Lee Sharp. Milligan has to get the head on this. Beckford is needed, he wasn't there. It's hooked back in for Hughes. It's there! <laughs> they didn't get the ball away, Oldham. And Manchester United have saved it in the last minute. Extraordinary stuff. It wasn't clear. And look at Mark Hughes, the volleying specialist, but he's never left it as late as that. And he rescues Manchester United with a brilliant strike round Fleming. It's Irwin. Now it's... Well, they've got plenty of players back. Milligan was one of them. Hintz took him on and got past him, plays it wide for Kanchelskis. Cross was a bit behind those lining up in the centre wearing red. Robson. And it goes from Dennis Arwin. The former Oldham player has scored here in the tenth minute. And Manchester United have struck early in the replay. And it's all about the awareness of Erwin and Robson. We look at Rick Holden. Fatally, he allows Dennis Irwin a yard. And I don't care if he's a fullback, Dennis Irwin. He's got the quality to stick those away, and he did it very well. Francescus. Oh, he's seen a hole he can move into to go for goal! How about that? He was going across the face of the penalty area till he saw some space. He found it, and he found the shot that makes it 2-0. Well, normally you're saying, go on, son, across you go, across you go. But the one person just making the right back makes a mistake, in my opinion, Martin, as he shows him too much of a gap. He's not tucked in near enough. He's too far out of the way. That invited the shot. And to be honest, Kinchelskis, oh, he won't hit many with his left foot better than that. He really won't. What a dream start for Alex Ferguson's side. Holden needs something. And Poynton has given it to them. Neil Poynton again. Oh, Hallworth missed it, Robson, the net was vacant, and it's 3-1, Hallworth absolutely devastated by it, Robson thrilled, and so are those on the Manchester United bench. Quick free kick. Giggs, found by Kanchelskis. Ryan Giggs going his own way, gets a second chance. Forward. 